All right, friends, we got some ground to cover here today. So um, and I know other people are, are jumping on as we as we get started. It's so good to see everybody. Welcome. It's almost October. Can you believe it? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK, we are going to kick off <clears throat> with our annual business meeting newly online. I'm going to do a little just a little bit of the State of the Union of SAIS. And then uh, we have the distinct honor and pleasure of having Ian Simmons joining us this afternoon to share with us um, all of the awesome things that he has seen and heard and done and how he is thinking about us all going forward. So um, one, one quick note, Jackie, I'll, I'll even sort of take this off your hands. Um, we are going to have a couple votes that we have to do. Um, uh, one for minutes and one for uh, the selection of new trustees. And we're gonna ask everybody to do that by going to your reactions and um, doing the little raised hand thing. So everybody try it right now. Can you raise your hand? There we go. It's right along the bottom. Look at this. Everybody is getting a star. Okay, now the, here's the trick. You gotta lower your hand. You know, what's really fun is that makes you guys all bounce around the screen too. All right, excellent. Jackie, you feeling confident now? I'm ready to go. Excellent. And I have the slides. All right. Okay, are we ready to go? Yes, Miss Jackie, go ahead. All right, well, so then I would like to now call the 2021 SAIS annual business meeting to order. And I believe we have a quorum, is that correct? Yep. Okay. Um, so it's great to see everyone. And um, just briefly before we get started, I, I just want to express gratitude for the important work that you all are doing to hold up your respective school communities and gratitude also for our collective work within this SAIS leadership community. Um, before we get onto the agenda, I wanted to share just a summarized segment of an article that was recently discussed in, um, I think, the Big Questions community. And it's an article about noble leadership in a divisive time. And the article's titled, Who Do You Choose to Be? An Invitation to the Nobility of Leadership by Margaret Wheatley. And she states, the global problems of this time cannot be solved globally, even though the solutions have long been available. The conditions for implementation are not. We need to turn our attention away from issues beyond our control and work with the people around us who are yearning for good leadership. We need to engage them in work that is within reach, that matters to them. And we need to use our influence and our power to create islands of sanity in the midst of a destructive sea. We can use our sphere of influence, however large or small, to do as Theodore Roosevelt enjoined us, do what you can with what you have where you are. And I could not be more proud of our organization and our undeniably genius leader, Deborah Wilson. Um, throughout the challenges of the past few years, she and the SAIS staff have courageously rewritten the playbooks on how and when to gather ideas and solve a series of crises for heads of school. And um, using the sphere of influence, the team has created islands of sanity that continue to grow and understanding for how we meet this moment to best serve um, the schools that we serve and the students that we serve. So this sanity factor is that ability to move forward despite different opinions as a community to the right next step. So there are not enough ways to say thank you to Deborah and to the team and to all of you. Um, so with that, I will transition to the approval of minutes. Um, First order of business is to approve the minutes from 2020 annual business meeting. You can find the minutes linked in the chat or attached to the email reminder that you received about this meeting earlier today. Are there any additions or corrections to this, these minutes? Hearing none. Um, if not, they stand approved as read. Um, next, we will hear the committee reports. So Mr. Cobb Atkinson, head of Westchester County Day School, will give the report of the membership and accreditation committee.
Hey, Cobb, you're muted. Cobb, you're on mute. That is the story of my Zoom life. <laughs> I am the on mute guy. So I appreciate you letting me know. Start again. At 385 schools, SAIS is the largest regional independent school association in the nation. Representing 14 states and three countries, the SAIS tent is filled with a diverse community of approaches to education. We were excited to welcome seven new members to SAIS in the 2020-21 school year. St. Anne's Belfield in Charlottesville, Virginia, Keystone Montessori School in Charlotte, Clarksville Academy in Clarksville, Tennessee, North Lake Christian School in Covington, Louisiana, Wayne Country Day School in Goldsboro, North Carolina, Covenant School in Dallas, and Greenfield School in Wilson, North Carolina. When the SAIS accreditation process was disrupted by the global pandemic in the spring of 2020, all accreditation visits were moved ahead one year. Visits resumed this spring in a hybrid model developed in conjunction with the SAIS Board of Trustees, and we successfully completed all of the visits that were postponed from the spring of 2020. In the spring of 2021, SAIS conducted 32 accreditation visits, three of which were initial visits. On behalf of the SAIS Accreditation Committee, congratulations to the newly accredited and reaccredited schools. And thank you to the chairs and the team members who participated on those visits. SAIS continues to represent independent education and accreditation at state, regional, and national levels, participating in multiple organ organizations, including ICASA, the International Council Advancing Independent School Accreditation, NCPSA, the National Council for Private School Accreditation, TEPSAC, Texas Private School Accrediting Commission, and VCPE, Virginia Council for Private Education. Due to the continued pandemic and the increased responsibilities on chairs and team members at their own schools, there was no accreditation summit in 2021. The summit will return in 2022 and will invite experienced accreditation chairs to examine trends that impact schools and therefore the accreditation process. We continue to thrive because of your dedication. Thank you for your commitment, your service, and your participation. When you're asked to serve on an accreditation team, please say yes, you won't regret it. Next up is the finance and audit report from Penny Townsend, head of Ransom Everglades School, barring any questions. Thank you, Cobb. And I'm actually standing in for Cliff King who could not be here with us. And I just wanna start by saying, number one, it's really nice to see all of you in the middle of what's already been a long week. I think that's sort of everybody's week. And Deborah, you have led um, SIS through a time, a really difficult time with Gravitas, Grit and Grace. And Laura, you've been an awesome second in command. I'm so proud to be part of this organization. I have all good news. The financial position of SAS at the end of our fiscal year, December 31st, 2020, was healthy and strong. Uh, the, the fiscal year 2020 audit was clean and unqualified. That's a great thing. And we ended the year with a positive surplus and continued to add to our reserves. Our reserves, our brokerage account is going, I don't want to say gangbusters, but it's going doing very well, which I hope all your endowments are. Um, our revenue streams during fiscal year 2020 77% was from membership dues, 17% from, from professional development, 4% from other miscellaneous services, and 2% from accreditation. We scaled back on accreditation during COVID. Uh, fiscal, fiscal year 2020 saw pretty dramatic changes in revenue because of professional development events and not holding them in person, but we also had a lot of expense reductions. Uh, we did receive funds from the payroll protection plan, to so we didn't have to, we had, um, Salaries, salaries for all our employees, but those were, and those were also forgiven the first quarter of 2021. So those are behind us and I, uh, the audit's not a, uh, any kind of threat. We continue to grow in both services and membership and our financial position is really solid. Uh, we are the biggest institution, the biggest association, but we're also the best. And we should be very proud of that and people wanna be members. So next, I want to ask by my pal Byron Halsey, who's the head of Woodbury Forest School, to come up and share the report from the Committee on Trustees. Thank you. Thank you, Penny, and it's great to see everyone. 
The SAIS Board of Trustees, upon recommendation by the Committee on Trustees, proposes the following new trustees for the, new, for the term January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2024. Adam Green, who is at Episcopal School of Jacksonville in Florida, Will Kessler at Battleground Academy in Franklin, Tennessee, Kavita Vasil at Highland School in Birmingham, Alabama, and Randy Watts at Brookwood School in Thomasville, Georgia. This is a recommendation that comes from committee and has been approved by the Board of Trustees. No second is therefore needed. It has been moved that this slate is approved as presented. But first, I want to ask if there is any discussion to be had on the slate of trustees proposed. Hearing none, I'll just ask all in favor, please raise your hand on the, uh, on the reaction as instructed by Deborah. All opposed, I guess you could give the thumbs down if you like. Excellent. Congratulations and welcome to the new members of the SAIS Board of Trustees. We're eager uh, and look forward to working with you. In addition to, uh, to the new slate of trustees and in accordance with Article 5 of the SAIS bylaws, the board has elected the following officers for 2022-2023. Our esteemed chair, Jackie Westerfield, who serves at Grandview Preparatory School in Florida. Vice chair would be DeBose Eggleston at Porter Gowd School in South Carolina. Our treasurer would be Penny Townsend who's at Ransom Everglades in Florida. The secretary would be Autumn Graves at St. Anne's Belfield School in Virginia. And our immediate past chair beginning in 2022 will be Mark Reed at the John M. Belk Endowment in North Carolina. Thank you to all officers and all trustees for your extraordinary service to SAIS. Next, we'll hear from SAIS President Deborah Wilson, and I join Penny and all members of the SAIS board uh, in thanking uh, Deborah and Lori for their awesome leadership of SAIS in these challenging times. Deborah, thank you, my friend. That was awesome. Thank you, everyone. It's always good to see the official business being done um, <clears throat> in a somewhat predictable manner, even if online. Um, I feel like nothing's been predictable for so long that it's just good to see it. So I'm just going to do a, a, a short president's report. <clears throat> we'll have the extended dance version at the conference in Atlanta in October. Um, but first, I just wanted to congratulate everybody on how well we have done during such a challenging time. Um, I'm so incredibly proud of our schools. I was at uh, the EMA conference on a panel last week in Seattle, and I was just gushing about all of you. So if you felt the reverberations in the force, that was what it was from. Um, I've just, I've never been so impressed with how well we can pull together, help each other out, carry each other along, and, and just help each other problem solve. It's really just been incredible and remarkable. Um, so we are the largest regional independent school association. Uh, we actually have gained a couple of schools since the end of fiscal year. So we now have 386 schools and growing. Um, this is sort of a, the breakdown. We play trivia games sometimes as a staff on staff retreats. And so our oldest school was founded in 1728. I challenge any SAIS staff member to put the name of that school in the chat, or if the head of that school is on, I'd love to, love to see you own, own up to that. Um, we're really a remarkable set of schools crossing a wide range of whether we're secular or non-secular, our missions are very different. We're delivering education in different ways, but um, it's just wonderful to have this group together. I did want to um, comment on the accreditation visits. This, this is what it normally looks like. And um, so you see spring of 2021, we do 32 visits, and this is what we're ramping up to for this coming academic year. So our team is um, not, not losing any ground. And in fact, <clears throat> I think we will do more visits this year, this academic year than we have ever, or certainly than we have done in the last number of years. So it's really kind of a powerhouse of an accreditation year getting back in the swing of things. Um, 
we've been doing our surveys and we've had a little bit of a staff shuffle. Uh, if you notice, we have Elizabeth Maglio, you've seen her on here, our last couple of heads rounds tables. And she is our new director of professional learning. <clears throat> and Sherry has taken over as, as director of resources. And that's freed up more of her time to spend on our surveys and the development of our surveys. So um, this summer, one of Sherry's many projects was the updating of the value narrative survey into the new school community feedback survey. Um, we worked with KBETS to help us um, update that, get it looking really great. And it's now out in Sherry, how many schools? Seven schools, I think, have that out in the ether. Um, we do still have our net promoter score survey still available. We're in the process of updating our governance health check survey. And, um, and you will see that it should probably be ready to go sometime during the month of October. And we still have our motivation and engagement snapshot surveys as well. So we're really excited about that updating and just making these more user friendly for all of you. Uh, as many of you know, we did have an incredible amount of virtual engagement. These were our numbers as of last March. Um, the pivot to online during COVID was really something else. And um, we appreciate all of you hanging in there with us for many countless hours of Zoom. If you were like me, by the time you hit last summer, you couldn't actually sit in your office chair anymore because um, it just brought back so many Zoom memories. But importantly, um, last summer, we really got to spend some time together in those salad days of mid-June to mid-July before Delta variant caught up with us. We were really able to, um, to host some incredible in-person opportunities, and we're looking forward to doing it again at the annual conference in October. And looking ahead, we are planning to do in-person at the annual conference, at the winter conference, and at the diversity conference. And you'll find those all on our new updated website. And we're also continuing our support groups with Rob and Michael. Um, those were a big hit last year. So we have one for heads and we have one for administrative leaders as well. So we continue to kind of click along and you'll probably see some of these updates and upgrades that have gone on for the last oh, six or so months. Um, our branding refit fresh, this will be the swag to have this coming year. This is our new Yeti, Yeti cup from SAIS. Um, and you'll see it on our new website. You see it on the new slides. And um, the new website just went live last week. So we hope you're enjoying that. Um, we have our new learning management system and we're really taking that out for a spin. We have a new and aspiring heads field guide that sort of creates a cohort where we do different gatherings together. Uh, we have one this week with a panel of experienced heads. We had uh, one two weeks ago on um, governance issues and managing governance issues. We've talked about legal topics. And we did our public to private teacher cohort through our learning management system uh, this summer. And we had more people sign up for that public to private event than we've ever had in the history of doing it. So um, we did run our first SAS diversity conference last year online and we'll do it in person this coming winter. And this is what you can expect to see for the remainder of 2021 and into 2022. Um, we have actually been upgrading the entire back end with the exception of the um, accreditation portal. So we have an entirely new association management system and we're gonna be doing a complete system migration. So we didn't wanna beat you all about the head with a new listserv right now because we know communication is really important, but you'll see that launching towards the end of the semester so that we're breaking in the new listserv in January. Um, you'll see a new and improved career center, greater seamlessness between systems. You're gonna see the head search database that will be live by the end of October or early November. And we're really gonna start now that we've got these tech projects more or less in place, once we smooth that out, we're gonna start doing some blue sky thinking for a new accreditation portal uh, that really meets the needs of our schools, both in the process of accreditation, but how we think about our schools and evolution and how we use this process um, going forward. Uh, you'll be seeing more around accreditation deep dives, more resources, more governance support. Um, we're doing more online governance support. We did a trustee trends and tune up in August and we had an incredible number of people sign up for it, but more importantly, more schools using that in their board retreats or in their board meetings for uh, professional development for their, um, for their boards, as we all know how vital that is. So um, I did wanna to touch briefly on the E4 projects just to remind you what this is. This is in conjunction with the E4. 
they gave us um, a grant for this project. It's going to be home at SEIS, and it's just about ready for some tire kicking. Uh, we've got a few people kind of playing around with it now, other association execs. This is a national database. We have about 4,600 heads of school, either currently active, retired, or long past. Uh, we have 25 to 2,600 schools in the system. And, um, and it does all kinds of neat tricks. So some of the SES board members are, are looking at this and playing with it now, but um, we will start the beta probably just before the SEIS conference. And so if you wanna be part of that process, please reach out and let me know. And we're gonna be building in resources specifically for heads and trustees involved in that search process. So if there's a particular resource you'd like to see, please don't hesitate to send me an email and we'll get that built out for us. But this is a really exciting project um, and I think you'll find it really fascinating. Uh, don't forget 2021 annual conference is coming up. Um, it's going to be October 17th through the 19th. Our opening keynote speaker is Amanda Ripley. Uh, she wrote the book called High Conflict. And so for those of you who sometimes skip on Sunday evening, you might want to jump in for that because it's really going to be an impressive and on point conversation, I think, with Amanda. If you haven't read the book, definitely pick it up. Um, we have a great uh, lineup of of speakers or workshops are really impressive. Um, I think it's gonna be very fun and goodness knows it's time for us to all get to actually see each other again. And so with that, Jackie, would you call, would you adjourn the business meeting before I turn us over to Ian? You have to unmute yourself, there you go. Cobb is laughing now. He's yes, like, I know. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> you just can't get it right, right? You like, just you know. I know, Jack. No, Jack. I job. know you well enough to know that you did that to make me feel better. And I just want to say thank you for making is, me feel better. That is true. I I really want to empathize and create that that experience. <laughs> but thank you so much, Deborah, and thank you, Lori, and thank you all. Um, at, with that, our 2021 SAIS annual business meeting is now adjourned.